just to give myself a bit, a bit of background, I worked in the original DCS project um, that set up the biogas program in Nepal, the domestic one. That was from 1977 to 1984. Ended up actually by doing the midterm evaluation of the UNDP project, which followed the USAID funded one. Um, in between, I taught on an MSc on renewable energy in Reading University in the UK. But one of my also been doing consultancy work, and one of my most interesting pr projects was working for Ashton. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, two years ago, I worked with Govinda, and we did an evaluation of the domestic program um, run by SMV both in um, Nepal, but also in Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And I also wrote up a report, a pay, sorry, a book on running a bio biogas program based on the work that we did uh, originally in Nepal. And I hopefully that I'll be able to present a new version by the end of this year. I've almost finished writing it. So what I'm trying to say is the best people to develop processes to so solve local problems are local people. And people within any country have got indigenous skills that we need to use in order to get a, a proper application of technology. And the most cost-effective solutions are often the most simple ones. I got involved in this many years ago with practical action. Um, that was Fritz Schumacher's idea of small is beautiful. But one of the essential issues there is that the most simple solutions aren't necessarily the most easy to develop. We have to do a lot of work to find out a low-cost solution that will work effectively. So I'm very keen on research and development. <laughs> right, I'll tell you a little bit about Ashton. It's part of the Sainsbury Foundation, which is one of the big charitable organizations in the UK. And they give awards for the best renewable energy projects in the world. And, one of the, and you can look it up on um, ashton.org, up there. The best renewable energy technologies we've discovered are those developed by a local entrepreneur to meet a, lo a local problem. So it's the World Bank, it's a local issue or a local uh, challenge. <laughs> and people need to share the information and learn from others. And this is really what I'm trying to put over, is that we need to develop something by learning from everybody else. I mean, that's the whole point of this meeting, is sharing ideas, learning from each other. So I want to give two very brief case studies. One is the whole domestic program in Nepal. It was started by a government initiative in 1976. Then we continued on to a research and development program in a group called Development Consulting Services, of which I was a part. That was funded by USID. Then it moved on to the Gober Gas Company, and that was funded by UNDP. And out of that came this GGC 2047 model, which is, we built 300,000 units uh, of that design. And it's been very successful. And of course, BSP won a national award in 2006, I think it was. <laughs> so that it links the two. Why was it successful? Why have we got so many biogas plants? And Nepal is seen as the greatest success in domestic biogas. The technology uses local skills and was developed in interactively between local practitioners and international advisors. We learned from each other. The big emphasis was on quality control and follow-up. That was introduced right at the very beginning and has been continued right through the program since. The extension processes use local skills. I've just said that. <laughs> um, so if you want any references on the subject, you can look at my book to see what was, uh, happened originally. You can look at my new book when it's published. And SMV has produced a massive amount of publications on the subject. And uh, you can go onto the other site and look under SMV publications to see what's been done. I want to bring up, us up to date on a new project, which basically has only happened this year, so it's very new. I've been working with Vijay Sagar over there in SKG Sangha for looking at, well, for looking at how to process three tons a day of food waste for a medical institution in the south of India called CMC Valore. SKG Sangha have already built 125,000 biogas plants and very successfully. We sometimes say that the Indian program hasn't been very successful. SKG Sangha are an exception to that and Vijay Sagar will tell us more about it later. The problem in CMC Valor was they were using aerobic composting, and that gave rise to a bad smell. And it got so much a big problem that the po local politicians were getting involved. So I worked with SKG Sangha to build a biogas system that will deal with this smell. I, just, I will mention Kingdom Bioenergy. It was a friend of mine um, set the company up for me, and that, it was her idea that we call, should call it Kingdom Bioenergy. <laughs> 
Just quickly have a look at the Velour system. It's a fixed dome underground plant of a larger scale. So this is the, um, as basically you all know about digging deep pits. Again, it's very conventional. You've already seen it building a wall. But the key thing was using Dean Bundu's techniques to build a fixed dome underground of a much larger scale. So that's a total a large scale underground fixed dome. And that is a, a new innovation. Well, actually, it's not an innovation because I saw this technique used in um, Rwanda, which was very successful. So I could say we can take the Rwandan idea, or actually developed by a Tanzanian engineer, and we can use it in South India. And that's just the ins and what it looks like inside. They're just plastering the dome. Just a few statistics. Um, the cost is um, 3.5 million Indian rupees, which is about 5.6 and a part million Nepali rupees. Um, I'm not too sure about the way that you measure the size of biogas systems, but I think I was told that this is about a, a 300 cubic meter system for or using the, the standard Indian um, weather measure. So we're hopefully getting 300 cubic meters per day of biogas, which is equivalent to um, 112 kilograms of LPG per day. So we've got quite a good return on investment. If you use that for electricity instead of for cooking, it's not quite so good. Because it depends on how much you charge for the electricity. Um, these are just preliminary um, assess estimates because we haven't commercialized this properly yet. So how did we do the design? I looked at the local capabilities of SKG Sanger. It's this uh, process which matters. We considered the local aspects of South India. Now, what, what, is, what do CMC already do? What do SKG Sangha already do? How do we bring those together to make a, a cost-effective system? So I visited CMC Valor, we talked to the people there, and we worked out how to do it. I took experience that I gained from Ashton visits from projects in UK, Rwanda, Ghana, and elsewhere in India. So I've been able to get an international perspective to apply to a particular local situation. So then I sat down and designed a prototype system which has now been made by SKG Sangus technicians, supervised by an SKG Sangus engineer. So you're taking a worldwide concept, concentrating them into a particular project, and making it work. It's a pilot system. It needs a lot more development, a lot more testing. It needs a research and development component. How can it be improved? This is the first attempt. We can make it much better. Design is adapted to local conditions. I know the capabilities of SKG Sanger because I've visited them many times and taken photographs of what they do. I know what their skill set are. I know the waste management capability of CMC Valor because I visited it and learned a lot from it. So using already uh, integral uh, skills that are already existing to bring into a new system, something which is now which is innovative and um, hopefully low cost. I cannot offer you SKG Sanger system for Nepal for several reasons. First of all, it's still under development. We don't know the best system yet. Secondly, it was designed for South India. It's not designed for Nepal. So we're using a skill set that is different. But I can offer you the, a, an, an approach. We can develop systems that are appropriate for Nepal, that are much lower cost than other systems, we can use capabilities that have already been developed by the, the MBPA companies, the, the National um, Biogas Producers Association. <laughs> I have to get the names right. So we, we know the technologies, we know the, the experience, but can we work a way by working together to develop a cost-effective system for much larger scale biogas that uses those, uh, that skill set that enables us to produce a low-cost system that is directly appropriate to Nepal? that is made by local people, that is run by local people. So what do we require? A team of local people experience the biogas. That's easy to find in Nepal. You're, you're all part of that program. We need a few external consultants, people who know about the technical aspects, the management aspects, and the systems aspects, extension processes. And we can find those fairly easily. There's plenty of people if we can locate them. We need funding. Well, this is why we're talking in the World Bank. <laughs> we need. R&D facilities, as um, we've already said once or twice, when SMB took over, they said, we've got a perfect system. We don't need more research and development. 
So that worked very well for domestic. But if we're going to move to larger scale, if we're going to move to new applications, we need to develop new ideas. We need to develop, and we need something, somewhere to do it, and an organization within which to do it. So that's what is necessary. So what I see as a result of all of this is an indigenous, indigenous capability to process organic residues in Nepal, which is what I think our aim is to do. If you want to look at my websites, um, Kingdom Biology is my own personal one. Um, I'm a consultant, and th that's what, how th the mechanism through which I work. Foundation SKG Sangha is an international charity which we set up to internationalize the work that SKG Sangha are doing in India. Mm -hmm.